Congress. Yeah. You know, I could start to just give a very short background about who I am. Um, you know, I started uh, 1973 at the Karolinska Institute, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I had started already the, the year before with my medical studies, but then 73, I met my uh, supervisor, or the person who was going to be my PhD supervisor, mm -hmm. and he's in a very, very famous scientist, uh, he wasn't then, but he became very, very famous. Mm -hmm. And um, his name is Thomas Höckfeldt. And together with him, we studied the brain, the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system. Uh, and uh, we could publish an enormous number of papers. And together with people that became Nobel laureates, and as I explained to Monsieur, it was very common for us to publish in journals such as Science and Nature, journals where people, you know, they dream wet dreams to be in such a journal, and very few are ever called to be there. But we were, it was sort of common to be there. Like in my PhD thesis, I have a Nature paper even, which is very, very rare. Um, and that was kind of the background. And then I had my dissertation. Uh, and it's common that you should change direction, so you shouldn't compete with your PhD supervisor. So I thought, hmm, how should I change direction? Well, I could go from rats and mice to a very uncommon type of experimental animal, namely humans. Mm -hmm. So I picked humans, and then we started to look on human skin, uh, oral mucosa and some other things that you easily could get from normal healthy volunteers. And I thought that everything was known about that, but very little actually. So we published again a huge number of papers. And then one evening at 8 o'clock, I listened to the radio in my laboratory, and it's very odd. I never do that actually, but for some odd reason I did. And I heard a person from the trade union in Sweden, and her name is Kajsa Vedin, a lady, and she was talking about some kind of people that had got health problems because of the new personal computer screens. And they had been introduced in Sweden around 1980. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting, maybe we could investigate that because we knew a lot about human skin. And then I thought maybe we could check what's the problem. And so I called her, we met together with a physicist, and the rest is history. That's the reason why I sit here today. But the funny thing was that with my background, uh, having, you know, I had met all the prestigious people in in the world. I was personal friend with the editor of Science, for instance, Floyd Bloom, etc., etc., etc. And then we opened this door and started to study health effects of electromagnetic fields. And we, woo, went like this, you know. No one wanted to publish, no one wanted to discuss, and it was a very odd situation. And people said that no, you shouldn't bother about this, you know. This is just in the imagination of people. This is not real, you know. But slowly I began to realize that, no, it wasn't. Uh, it was very real. And in the car this morning, Monsieur took up the latest publication of uh, myself and my co-workers. And now, 2015, we are back at Sci Nature Scientific Reports. So we have come up from the basement all the way to the finest saloons in science. And that's very telling. This is a huge issue nowadays. And also with my background kind of, um, uh, it's um, very reassuring to see uh, that we are coming back. And during that process, and that would be like from 1980 until today, um, for the first years, no one called us. Uh, but from 1993-4, um, uh, reporters and journalists started to call us, and not from small Swedish magazine, no, 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 no. The first call was from BBC in London, 
And I didn't even believe them. So when they called, I said, no, 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 this is a joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. who is it? And they, no, I'm calling from BBC. We want to interview you because the things you do are so extremely important for mankind, for biology, and for this planet. And I, wow, I, I hardly didn't even understand that, you know. And since then, the telephone never stops. You can take whatever combination of letters, including Al Jazeera and American channels and you name it. I've been in every uh, uh, radio and TV channel, on the YouTube, on websites, in magazines, journals, newspapers, tabloids. And that's very interesting. And also, finally, the last five years, there's a new category of people calling me, which didn't call before, lawyers. <laughs> Uh, no, no, good people, very good people. And you know, they are calling from the whole world. Uh, yeah, some time ago, there was a Japanese lawyer who said, I want to come and uh, talk with you. And I said, oh, that's all right. The Karolinska Institute is a public authority, so you are warmly welcome to come here. Yes, uh, but I want to bring another 10 lawyers. <laughs> wow, uh, you guys have money, I mean, to bring 11 people from Japan to Sweden for several days with hotels. That's costly, you know, and they did. So we had 11 uh, lawyers and they interviewed me because they are running different lawsuits. And um, uh, of course the most, um, how should you say, um, exciting lawsuits are the American ones. Uh, you know, they are aiming for enormous compensations. Uh, and um, they are talking about in the order of 100 billion US dollars per case. And they are not suing the companies, not the operators, not the insurance companies, they are um, suing the American state. Is the fact which people don't understand uh, when you talk with ordinary people in the street, they believe they are protected and they are not. I have been at public conferences in London 2004 where I learned that, for instance, the manufacturers, they have completely rid themselves of any form of liability and responsibility. The same for the operators, the same for the insurance companies, which is very interesting. You know, they have like a black list. There are a few items they do not assure or reassure for. One of them is health effects of electromagnetic fields, that's very telling. You are naked as newborn babies from a legal point of view. You can never get any compensation from an insurance company if you get a brain tumor from your mobile phone. Uh, and they have been completely open about it. It's nothing hidden. Swedish newspapers have written about that numerous amounts of time. Further on, the radiation protection authorities in the world have said no. They have abandoned ship. And the World Health Organization, through its cancer classification of electromagnetic fields, have said, you have to take the responsibility yourself. Uh, and this is because, you know, the World Health Organization can be uh, found liable in front of the United Nations. And after these vaccine scandals with Pandemix, they don't want to have that again. And therefore, um, they protect their back, you know, by saying, oh, this is cancer classified, now it's up to you to decide as consumers. Uh, and um, this is interesting, coming back to this, and we're talking about the biggest law firms in the United States, you know, they go for the throat, namely the American state, because they say it's no idea to attack the operators or the manufacturers or the insurance companies, because they've already told you, we are not going to take any responsibility for this. And in London, it was interesting, there was a representative, a lawyer, by the way, a lawyer who said that for all of us here in London, it's not the question if there are health effects. The question is only who is going to pay for it, and we will not pay for it, period. And of course, that's a business model. They are not sort of bound by law to take responsibility, because the responsibility is always big father and big mother, namely the governments and parliaments in each country, and here in Europe, of course, the European Union, Parliament and Commission, and they have said that we shall 
force parents like you to send their kids to schools that are exposed to something the World Health Organization has cancer classified. And that sort of upsets people in the world, I could tell you. Uh, that really upsets people. And therefore, there are a lot of these uh, parental movement groups, campaigners, activists, all over the world, saying that, no, we don't want to send our kids to these schools, you know. So, mm -hmm. that was a short introduction, sorry. <laughs> I, I completely agree with you. And just to begin with, if we talk about, for instance, mm -hmm. the third generation mobile telephony, not the second, not the fourth, only the third, no power lines, no computer, only these, and we ask ourselves, how much more radiation are you affected by today than for like 10 years ago? What is the increase? Is it two times the natural background? Is it three times maybe, four times? No, the answer is a quintillion times. That's a one with 18 zeros. Mm -hmm. So the increase in radiation exposure compared to natural background is more than biblical. I mean, it's hard to even understand what that means, you know. So the electrosmog that is called in Germany, it's dense, you know. And then people have started with, and, and this is a long story, but uh, we can talk more about that later on. Uh, there are um, recommendations. And from a legal point of view, as far as I understand, they are only recommendations if you violate them, nothing happens. It's just an indicator what you should aim for. And these are then, as I say, a quintillion times higher. Uh, and they are based on fluid-filled plastic dolls. Not on human beings, not on cats or, or dogs, not on plants, nothing like that. And it's a purely technical issue. And therefore, I have, together with other scientists, for many years, claimed that we must have biologically based exposure guidelines. And I'm the only one in the world who has gone one step further. I have said that we need to have, based upon law, what we in Sweden would call hygienic safety standards. Uh, and uh, I have proposed that we should use the natural background, meaning that these systems will not work, of course, but then we will be safe. Then your kid will not be harmed in the school. And instead of using this wireless electrosmog based, we can have a shielded wired cable to a computer, for instance, in school, and the information will be the same. The games and the colors and the words and nothing will change mm -hmm. and you know my wife she's a daycare center teacher with small children and um, she has listened to me and in her uh, daycare center they are not allowed to have any computers or uh, tablets or, or mobile nothing right. nothing like that you know and she also says that from a pedagogic point of view uh, she's not very impressed by these things and you know there are very interesting studies when small children start to learn to write letters they do like this and while the hand is moving it's imprinting on the brain so the brain learns how an A looks like or an O or an L but if you do like this then the imprint will be the same a K and a T and an O will look the same and your learning is decreased and scientists have shown in very well done studies that the learning short term memory and concentration capacity is decreased when you are exposed in double blind exposures to these electromagnetic fields. Again pointing to that what are we doing? Uh, down the road will there be parents and children growing up who will be angry actually and will say why did you do this? What, didn't you listen to these experts? Uh, you, there were choices you can have made. The odd society. You should come there and look, you know. It's a very strange society. Uh, because we have a um, rollout 
of wireless systems uh, everywhere. Uh, every child should have it and every politician, every person, you know. At the same time, we have a group called electro-hypersensitive people and they are protected by law as a group with a functional impairment or disability or handicap. Uh, and the most important principle for people with disabilities is the principle that they should, and I quote the United Nations, they should live an equal life in a society based on equality, meaning accessibility. Uh, and you roll out something that they don't like. So it's a very odd situation. And I have tried to get people with electrohypersensitivity to be a little bit tougher, you know. Swedes are very, very uh, low-key, you know. Uh, you, you, you hardly notice a Swede in a room, you know. Uh, and they never say anything, and they are very sort of silent. And, um, uh, but I told them, you, you have to say no. No more of this, you know. And a few people are starting more and more. But at the same time, you have this massive rollout. And I have written to the Swedish uh, government and parliament, and I have asked them to send me the documentation that clearly shows that it is safe <coughs> to expose people 24-7. And so far, after 30 years, I have not got a single sentence, not a word, not a comma or a period, nothing back, you know. And because, you know, I'm, I'm like a fire brigade soldier. If this is safe, then I want to go to Africa and help people with Ebola or something like that. I should be used where I could do best good. And, uh, but they refuse to send anything, which is also telling. Because used to send anything, which is also telling. Because we know, of course, there isn't anything to send. Uh, they don't have any counter arguments and therefore they don't send anything, you know. Uh, and uh, so that's an interesting situation. And uh, in Sweden, you have this accessibility problem. Um, we do have places and areas and people with this handicap, they could get, for instance, an electro-sanitized car so they could drive around. Uh, but at the same time, they have to be in this society. And, I mean, when you sit in here, you are exposed at levels that even for a scientist is hard to really understand. I mean, the exposure levels are astronomical and more so. And someone has decided it's safe. And we can never see who decided this and what did they do and so it's secret always, you know. And at the same time, you know, I'm stressed because every morning when I get to my work, my computer looks like a pregnant woman. You know, it's so many new papers that has been published since yesterday. So I cannot keep track any longer. They are just raining, like rain on top of here, and all pointing in the same direction. This is not good for people, animals, plants, bacteria, and so on, you know. Like this. But, um... And and you know <laughs> just just to interrupt you shortly, mm -hmm. if we would, you know, I, if I would do like this, and all the mobile phones and tablets and so on would disappear, nothing would happen. Scientists know that one thing would happen: the so-called psychosocial health in society would start to increase again because people would start to talk to each other instead of via machines. And the first thing I would say was, you know, sorry, my mobile phone has gone missing. And you would say, oh, that's odd. Mine has also disappeared. But we still have to breathe, eat, sleep, learn, work, and, and go by transport. And nothing would change. Uh, and therefore, I mean, like in schools, What's the big drama to use a shielded, wired system? It's exactly the same information. So... Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think that's personal opinion. But 
that we have <coughs> we should change the the methods of learning in the school. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. Think, I, think I completely agree. Really yeah. Yeah, completely. And and Doing now this. more and more science is supporting you actually. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. But it's not sorry, it's not just a problem with schools. I of mean, course not. Even no, if no. we solve the problems in schools, yes. what about houses and not only houses? Is supporting you actually? Mm -hmm. oh, yes. But it's not. Sorry, it's not just a problem with schools. I of mean, course not. Even no, if no. we solve the problems in schools, yes. what about houses and not only houses mm -hmm. in yeah. the city council? Yeah. 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 So it's not just about yeah. schools no, I know, or no, even I know. houses. Yeah. We are yeah. exposed yeah. everywhere. Yes. So yes. Which, yeah. which uh, kind of, of measures can, can be implemented to prevent not only children but everybody? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I have a real good answer, but I have one answer at least, because some years ago I was invited to the European Union and we talked for one day about exactly these kind of issues and at the very end of the day, uh, when everyone was about to leave, I had to say stop, stop, wait, wait, I have one final question. I have to know um, what was the underlying human need that made the European Union decide to um, implement in each member state the rollout of wireless systems. And then this commissioner, whatever his name was, he laughed and said, well, you know, Lewis, that's probably the most intelligent question I ever heard in the European Union. And the answer is very simple, the one to the other side, you know. Uh, and um, so maybe the answer is that more and more consumers, uh, ordinary citizens, needs to step up and say, no, I don't want myself or my kid to be exposed at playgrounds, schools, homes, streets, shops, or whatever. And in the beginning, of course, people would laugh and say, no, 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 we don't listen to you. But if the momentum is gaining speed, more and more people are joining, more and more parents, for instance, then they have to listen. So, or if you can come up with some very brainy legal twitch, and I'm not the lawyer, so I don't know how you do that, you know, but some very smart thing, you know. Yes. Yeah. So you yeah. have at this moment. I yeah. don't know any if it's no, I agree. correct. Or and, and that's, uh, you know, in science we call that the condensation mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts with a small, small, yes. small decision yes. that's, somewhere. That's the point. It yes. could be in mm -hmm. South Africa, Spain, mm -hmm. or Sweden. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yes. matter, but it will spread, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's interesting. We talk in the car. Mm -hmm. If we turn back time, fifty years to 1965, in this <laughs> room, we would all be doing something we don't do today. What would we be doing? 1965. Everyone would be, <laughs> everyone, you know, there are movies uh, that or yeah. videos that were made at that time and news cost reels and so on, everyone <laughs> like this and today it's just impossible to even think about that and we would even laugh and say how stupid they were, you know, didn't they understand and but that they did not understand actually, it was meant to be good for you. And if we go 50 years ahead of time and we have a meeting in this room, maybe someone will say how stupid they were at 2015. Didn't they really understand what they were doing? And this is, I should just come back to you. This is actually, you know, the reason um, in the United States there was, uh, was it last year, 2014, or was it this year? I can't really remember. Maybe it was last year. The, United States Supreme Court, they had this widow to a man that had died of lung cancer because of smoking, and they had got the compensation of 2.32 billion US dollars, and the Supreme Court said, no, that's not enough. We will grant you, as the highest level, 23 billion US dollars. One single case, you know. And she was not even the smoker, it was the dead husband who was. Mm -hmm. And then you have to remember that when he started to smoke in the 50s, uh, no one understood at all what was going on. People even thought it was good with smoking. 
And that's the difference this group of lawyers told me when it comes to health effects of electromagnetic fields. Um, people knew already in the 1950s and 60s that this is really bad for you and still the wireless society was developed and therefore um, I think you say in legal term you harm with intent you know what you are doing to harm this person you know and that's worse than if I'm ignorant and therefore they said we will go from 23 to at least one and that's really cynical and I think mankind needs already now to start thinking uh, how should we really have the society built should we allow that kind of greedy things going on and if you ask ordinary people they would say no if you ask the CEOs they say oh yes we should have it you know so it's really a crossroad now and you have entered a very important um, term which I have coined myself uh, I think it's time for green human friendly technology and there's one country in the world who is very interested in this and this country is extremely rich but they have a limited number of years to earn money and therefore they are looking for new places to put their money and they want to be the biggest in everything and that country is Norway they are very much into human friendly technology because they realize that they will be the winners of tomorrow when people start asking how should I make this in a safe way oh we have this Norwegian computer and Norwegian tablet and Norwegian mobile phone or whatever you know how they will look I don't know but that's their aim at the meeting 2004 in London uh, there were representatives at you know top uh, lower level from the operators the manufacturers and the insurance companies and they said that the Dow Corning issue with breast implants and the smoking scandal that was the very last time any company on this planet ever will face any form of economic liability and therefore they have put thousands of lawyers to write in their license agreements and so on sentences that clears them completely of any form of responsibility so therefore the insurance companies and all of these they are not any longer a target uh, the target is only one and that's the society because society have said oh yeah we want to have this and as you say we should have a playground that can communicate with the municipality computers and so on mm -hmm. so they really are the ones responsible so I think one has to identify the responsible persons and go for their necks and just one example which was very interesting this year in England um, there was a parental movement group who asked a simple question if my child is harmed in a wireless school who is then responsible now and in the future and an email conversation went up and down in Sweden we call them rector the headmasters of each school and now the funny thing happened when that was announced publicly several headmasters immediately quit their job because even if we are in England it will cost money if you are found liable in a court of law as a headmaster and I talked with one which I know very well myself I called him and I said are you going to quit yes I am he said uh, but it's not about the economy but you know I don't want to retire knowing that I have harmed a child in my school I don't want to have that on my conscience I don't bother about the money he said it's a conscious matter it's a matter of moral and ethics and I said Jesus I've always been impressed by you but now I'm even more impressed uh, because if people always thought about that in that way then you have this sort of public announcement that hey interesting question I'm not an expert on it but I've seen some publications that are sort of indicating that it could be an issue at the same time of course radiation of food products like spices for instance yeah. uh, could be very effective could to kill any um, uh, hazardous germs and so on 
So it's a sort of a balance between too bad or too good or whatever you should say, you know. And so I don't really know. But it's interesting that you mentioned the mad, mad cow disease because as um, you know, um, and I have written several papers with a Swedish lawyer about this because then we talk about the precautionary principle and in the court of law of the European Union it states in layman terms that the suspicion of one single case is enough to arouse attention within the entire European Union and to attract major scale interventions. I mean, we're talking about killing hundreds of thousands of cows and so on, you know. Mm -hmm. And if the precautionary principle would be applied in the same way on what we know today about health effects of electromagnetic fields, they would all be stopped immediately. Yeah. Nothing would be allowed, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you have to remember that mad cow disease, the knowledge was ve not very high, you know, and with smoking there was none, but if you print uh, on paper the uh, top 5,000 publications, only them, not all of them, but only the top 5,000, it will form a pile of paper that is somewhere between 5 and 10 meters high, you know. So the knowledge here is enormous. And then still there are so many other papers that are relevant. And while we are talking, my computer goes like this, you know, more and more and more and more, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a different situation. Yeah. And with the precautionary principle, we are not talking about the suspicion or single cases. We talk about knowledge and a huge number of potential future cases. And therefore, as I said, in this ship where you are sailing, most of the captains and sailors have left the ship. The manufacturers, the operators, the insurance companies, the radiation protection boards, the World Health Organization, they are not aboard any longer. They say, Go, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, to begin with, when I give lectures, I always tell people, do not trust me. You have to do your own homework. You have to read for yourself. You have paper enough to read. Start reading it, you know, and make up your mind. Should I as a consumer accept this or should I protest? So that's very important. And also that, you know, people should identify their targets. For instance, in, in, I very often meet people who want to move a telecom mast away from something which is very... Um, how should you say, unethical, because when I move it away from him, I move it closer to her. So he doesn't want to have it, but she should have it. And therefore I tell people, don't move anything. You should say no to the radiation, to the microwaves. That's what you should do. And instead ask for safe uh, installations like shielded computers, etc. And also finally, don't get me wrong, I want to be wrong. I want everything to be safe. I don't want to have fathers that are scared about their kids. I want them to be feel safe, happy, all these fun gadgets, and they should be pedagogically superb and so on, you know. But that would mean that in the order of 25,000, and you remember we have 5,000 papers here, 25,000 papers all have to be wrong at the same time. And that has never, ever happened in science, you know. Single papers could be wrong, but they have gone through a very harsh evaluation called a peer review based process, where a lot of anonymous experts have read the manuscript, you know, and said either it's good, it's bad, or well, you have to do this and that, then we can publish it. And no way they could have missed all of that, so they should be wrong, you know. And, but I would love to, uh, but I would hate to come to St. Peter at the pearly gates when I'm dead. And he says, Ulle, why didn't you speak up? Why didn't you do anything? I want him to say, you good, did as good as you could. That's it. You failed, uh, but you did as good as you could, you know. And of course, failing is interesting too, because I wouldn't be so um, 
uh, sort of um, um, engaged in this area if it wasn't for the fact that we don't only jeopardize his children and himself but we jeopardize all animals all plants there are so many studies showing that for instance tomato plants ants honeybees uh, rats mice cells molecules should not buy own and use mobile phones tablets etc definitely not because they are very badly damaged you know and probably in the most scary effect and now we're coming again to your area actually uh, is the fact that this is and um, this year there's a Swede who has received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry on DNA damage and reparation and non-ionizing radiation like microwaves from towers they are genotoxic they destroy the DNA of your cells and as you know if it would have been a food item or a pharmaceutical drug or something it's forbidden according to international law to further develop, manufacture and sell genotoxic products because that's a nightmare worse than Hollywood if such a thing is let loose in the population and we already have done it and even the industry have replicated these findings and found them to, to be true to be true in, in the, which, um, these uh, effects to the health of the human mind is of the, of the human health is with the intensity of a cell phone yeah of the, the, the intensity in the wave yeah of, of a cell phone yeah or is much higher because normally the the other side is saying no no, no but this health effects of electromagnetic wave it's happening in a much higher no 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 um, the top uh, sort of scientists are today approximately 100,000 times below the public exposure time standard and even the European Union Parliament have said that the exposure standards are completely obsolete and do not protect for any radiation damage not at all and the uh, um, um, what, what do you say the authority behind these exposure standards uh, the head of that professor Paolo Vecchia from Italy he has said that they were never meant to be any medical protective standards. They cannot be used as a um, wall behind which industry could hide and so on. He has completely said that you cannot use it. These are technical standards. There are no medical standards. There are no biological standards. And therefore we have urged for the introduction of such and especially based on the genotoxic effect. And again, it's so simply solved by just using a hygienic safety standard mm. and I have then suggested to use the natural background which we were born into and uh, we, we um, uh, de were developed into and then suddenly overnight someone put on this biblical exposure and I remember when I proposed this and that was already 1997 you were not even born then, you know. It was a long time ago, you know. So, and, and in that room at the trade union, one of the largest trade unions in Sweden, in that uh, room, it was a room like this, you know, one of my most strong opponents were present. And this person, he said this, I usually never um, uh, trust what Will Johansson is saying, but this time he's gone. So... Yeah. <coughs> and one thing you have to keep in mind is that a technical, is technical um, um, point of view yeah. from 1998, yeah. from the, the electronics and manufacturing, yeah. it's not like based on health effects. No, not at all. And, and, and they have never claimed that, you know. Six yeah. minutes by six minutes. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. And uh, uh, you probably have read that, you know, that yeah. the public exposure standards in Barcelona, uh, they are only valid if you buy a mobile phone, you make one single call at most for six minutes and never ever again. Is that the way human beings use mobile phones 
they buy used for six minutes and then throw it away and never buy a new one? Of course not. So the European Union Parliament is right. This has nothing to do with safety. It's just a technical issue and it's used these uh, values for antenna development in, in the technical process industry. It has nothing to do with you or your children or your dogs or cats or goldfishes or tomato plants. And a recommendation, yes. It's just a recommendation. And so, so from I a legal point of view, of yeah. The, the, you know, this is a recommendation. You, I want my girl to be wild. I don't want wild as in my yeah. in the school of yeah. my girl. Mm -hmm. And especially not since the World Health Organization has cancer classified both the type of rays coming from a mobile phone uh, and also uh, because all the insurance companies have left the boat, the manufacturers, the operators and so on, uh, they have completely abandoned ship. Uh, so why should they force parents to put children in this situation? Yes. And above all, the gene of toxicity. You know, I could wake up in nights suddenly like this and thinking, no, I must have dreamt this. Is it really genotoxic? The Nobel Prize in chemistry this year is about genotoxicity as the most scary thing on the planet, you know. No, we, we must be better than this. The mankind race must be better than this, you know. We must mm -hmm. say stop, you know. And again, I hope I'm wrong. I'm hoping that it's safe. But then a lot of papers must be uh, corrected in the future, and that would be surprising in its um, Well, I think there is a direct effect between smoking and health. Okay. Could I just stop you for a second? Yes. Scientifically, the association between smoking and lung cancer is actually very weak. Mm -hmm. In the media, it sounds as if you buy a package of cigarettes, you get lung cancer. Scientifically, it's very weak, but it's strong enough to say this is not good for us. It's good for the tobacco companies, but it's not good for the general um, uh, uh, users, the consumers. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about the associations uh, we between healthy... Very important. Yeah. I think that's the main point, yeah. to change policy. I, I think um, the shift has already been done, mm -hmm. already 15 years ago, when the first news came forward that the insurance companies, they do not insure or reassure for any health effects of electromagnetic fields. Then I remember I felt, oh yeah, we are already there. It will just take 20 or 200 years time for society to realize what they have already realized. And then slowly also the news came forward for the operators, the manufacturers, and then also the radiation protection boards were very early to leave ship and also the World Health Organization, so... Sorry, which are these uh, direct correlations, like smoking with lung cancer? Yeah, in an weak association, yes. Yes, in, in an electromagnetic fields, which are the direct yeah. effects, if you can tell us yeah. some... Like if, if I would, yeah, if I would sort of rank them in, in some kind of way, you know, people talk mostly about cancer. Uh, especially brain tumors, and that's the basis for the World Health Organization's cancer classification, of course. But there, actually, if I would rank things, I would probably put them at the bottom. That's the least scary thing of them all, you know. The most scary is the gene toxic effect, which in itself can explain the cancer issue, the immune system reaction alterations, and for me, of course, the most scary thing is the uh, long-term effects on fertility. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, um, just yesterday we talked about even a project that we could do here in Spain to look on male sperm cells and as a replication. That has been published several times already. And male sperm cells and female egg cells they don't like mobile phones and tablets and so on, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, that's scary because the effects um, are over generations. And uh, it seems as if the effect in mice and other rodents will appear in five generations. If we translate that to people in Barcelona, 
they will not be able to get kids in about 150 years time and then it's a little bit too late to call back and say hey could you please stop that that you are doing 2015 or even earlier it's also again the editor and now you have to remember I'm sorry I'm a little bit long here but it was published in a journal called bioelectromagnetics it's supposed to be the industry's journal they own it through their editors and editorial boards and so on and still they had to publish it and I talked with the editor and he revealed that this particular study I'm thinking about by Magras and Senos it went through something that Nobel Prizes often go through uh, and you discover that 50 years later on when the archives open namely a double referee process meaning that when his um, he got this manuscript he sent it to the experts in the world and they said this is fine you have to publish this he got so very insecure so he said hmm I need to send it to five more you know and they also said no there's nothing wrong this is perfect it's extremely accurately done and it tells you that in five generations time these mice will be infertile you know I think in the meantime um, it will already have grown a supplementary methodology uh, so if we come back in 15 years time maybe these mobile phones are not any longer on the table uh, maybe Hopefully. yeah <laughs> may, maybe they are not yeah in no in it's not in pockets, pockets no right <laughs> and we communicate in another way which we don't know and speaking, speaking <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know we could we you know we could have mobile phones but based on a completely other technique and if I see in my crystal ball, mm -hmm. it will be a Norwegian mobile phone, you know, and uh, um, based upon whatever technology, but it would have been sort of eased into the society while the others have gone away and without any big drama, kind of. Uh, and um, maybe it will be even impossible to make any lawsuits or whatever. When I lecture in Sweden, you know, Sweden was the very first country uh, to, from a trade union point of view. The trade unions used to be very strong in Sweden. They are not any longer. Uh, but they uh, argued for um, a marking of uh, computer screens to have it a low radiation and a lot of other things. Ergonomics, ecology, uh, how you should take care of the electronics after it was um, used and so on, you know. Uh, but it should be a low emission screen and today if I stand in Stockholm and say hey would you like to buy this computer screen it's high radiation people would laugh <laughs> no 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 we want to have a low radiation and so that could be the same that people would say no I don't want to have that you know I want to have this Nor Norwegian mobile phone and maybe it will be even worse we don't know I mean, humans are not very intelligent, as you know, uh, and we develop techniques uh, that um, interfere with our normal living. And when I give lectures, I always remind people, you never see a giraffe with a machine gun. There are only human beings that are doing this, you know. So. But, you know, uh, talking about, uh, we shouldn't forget, um, I was at a meeting in California, in San Francisco, in 2009 I think it was fantastic meeting and they did a huge number of interviews and and uh, media presentations and so on and I had two lectures which is very very um, honorable you know and one before lunch and one after lunch and before lunch I went on blah 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 and then there was lunch and then I noticed something very odd because the audience all of the people were strongly against irradiating children and grown-ups and so on but everyone went out and <laughs> and then in my second talk and you can see it on the YouTube I start by saying over lunch you completely lost credibility I cannot trust you any longer <laughs> it, it, it's like saying no to childhood pornography and then watch a little bit yourself you know no you have to make up your mind and therefore, 
uh, one needs to really get the consumers to sort of make up their mind, should we or should we not? And as you so very wisely said, if we clean the school, we must clean the home and the street and the playground and uh, grandmother's home and, grand and so on, you know. And otherwise, credibility is really lost, I would say, you know. And few people understand uh, if you lift your mobile phone to your head or to your body, it equals several of your beautiful Spanish electric train engines. So even if we don't talk about the microwaves, but the extremely low frequent magnetic fields, this small thing equals several electric train engines, which in Sweden at least is the highest occupation exposure that is allowed outside of nuclear power plants. And magnetic fields. Yeah, magnetic very, fields. Very, yeah. Very and that was the reason 2001 that World Health Organization cancer classified power frequent magnetic field, which is a long word for ordinary household electricity which you have in your home and here, you know, in, in the wall sockets, uh, and its association with childhood leukemia. But would you... ...but based on a completely other technique. And if I see in my crystal ball, mm -hmm. it will be a Norwegian mobile phone, you know, and uh, um, based upon whatever technology, but it would have been sort of eased into the society while the others have gone away and without any big drama, kind of. Uh, and um, maybe it will be even impossible to make any lawsuits or whatever. I don't know, but maybe. Uh, so society will change or, and I know many lawyers around the world are working very hard on lawsuits. You know, if an American lawyer goes up and wins, That's the yeah, point. so you are the key. Mm -hmm. And it could I be a Spanish or Catalonian lawyer. <laughs> it, yeah, the key is still you. <laughs> because that will send such a message to the world. Yeah, yeah. And you know, when I lecture in Sweden, you know, Sweden was the very first country and uh, to uh, from a trade union point of view the trade unions used to be very strong in sweden they are not any longer uh, but they uh, argued for um, a marking of uh, computer screens to have it a low radiation and a lot of other things ergonomics ecology uh, how you should take care of the electronics after it was um, used and so on you know uh, but it should be a low emission screen and Today, if I stand in Stockholm and say, hey, would you like to buy this computer screen? It's high radiation. People would laugh. <laughs> no, 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 no. We want to have a low radiation. And so that could be the same, that people would say, no, I don't want to have that. You know, I want to have this Nor Norwegian mobile phone. And maybe it will be even worse. We don't know. I mean, humans are not very intelligent, as you know. Uh, and we develop techniques uh, that um, interfere with our normal living. And when I give lectures, I always remind people, you never see a giraffe with a machine gun. There are only human beings that are doing this, you know. So. But, you know, uh, talking about, uh, we shouldn't forget, um, I was at a meeting in California, in San Francisco, in 2009, I think it was, fantastic meeting and they did a huge number of interviews and and uh, media presentations and so on and I had two lectures which is very very um, honorable you know and one before lunch and one after lunch and before lunch I went on blah 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 blah, blah. and then there was lunch and then I noticed something very odd because the audience all of the people were strongly against irradiating children and grown-ups and so on but everyone went out and <laughs> and then in my second talk, and you can see it on the YouTube, I start by saying, over lunch, you completely lost credibility. I cannot trust you any longer. <laughs> it, it, it's like saying no to childhood pornography and then watch a little bit yourself, you know.
No, you have to make up your mind. And therefore, uh, one needs to really get the consumers to sort of make up their mind. Should we or should we not? And as you so very wisely said, if we clean the school, we must clean the home and the street and the playground and uh, grandmother's home and, grand and so on, you know. And otherwise, credibility is really lost, I would say, you know. And few people understand uh, if you lift your mobile phone to your head or to your body, it equals several of your beautiful Spanish electric train engines. So even if we don't talk about the microwaves, but the extremely low frequent magnetic fields, this small thing equals several electric train engines, which in Sweden at least is the highest occupational exposure that is allowed outside of nuclear power plants. And magnetic fields. Yeah, magnetic very, fields. Very, yeah. Very and that was the reason 2001 that World Health Organization cancer classified power frequent magnetic field, which is a long word for ordinary household electricity which you have in your home and here, you know, in, in the wall sockets, uh, and its association with childhood leukemia. But would you, um, which is the different, uh, the difference in the intensity of this uh, radio frequency in between the, for example, a laptop yeah. with no Wi-Fi, or a laptop um, with Wi-Fi? Okay. To answer that, I have to say that there is very little that points to that the intensity is of an interest. Uh, it's probably not. It's a frequency dependent issue. If I scream to you that Spain is fantastic, or if I whisper, the message is still the same. The intensity doesn't change it. But if I change the frequency and say, Spain is rotten then suddenly it's another message. So it's probably more due to that than to intensity. And the interesting thing is that when we talk about intensity variations, you can even get down to levels which we cannot even measure. I could think that I will kill you all and you will not be pre-warned. You cannot measure what I'm thinking. And that's the same when we talk about, for instance, stars. We cannot measure the SAR level as we measure these. It's zero watts per kilogram. So according to radiation protection authorities, stars doesn't exist. But we can see them. And that's also Nobel Prize rewarded, you know, why we see them. So intensity, not so interesting. But we could talk a lot about it, of course. Uh, but if you imagine you stand on a street and you look up on a skyscraper that has a quintillion number of stories or more and if you take off a thousand or add a thousand you still cannot see the roof because it's out in the... Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. yeah. And especially what you brought up with the parallels to the food issues, very interesting. We'd like to, to know something about your, maybe some working paper. That of course, yes, read. yes, of course. In particular, in my case, it's yeah. related yeah, of to course. the food. Yeah, huh? and since you have very little time, I would suggest that you read only one paper and you can send it to them. That and I, I, I'm thinking about the sale it to. Yes, it's only eight pages because we have written another, which is called the By Initiative Report. And that's about, um, is it 2,000 pages? It's a little bit thick. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, you know, the yeah. European Parliament, they read the first version, and that was only 600 pages, yeah. but still they read it. It took them a year to read it, yeah. but they did. So that was impressive, I must say, you know. Yeah, and then they concluded okay. that we were right. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, and I, I, yeah, and I would just repeat myself then. Uh, I mean, I would put forward uh, the cancer classification, the genotoxic effects, and from a parental point of view, um, I mean, if I was a father to a small child, I would never dream of 
putting them in a situation that they were expo exposed to genotoxic effects or to um, potentially cancerogenic effects. Uh, but of course, you have to remember that Sweden wants to kind of brag about, uh, right or not, I don't know, but we are an extremely clean country. And people are very, very cautious with children, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we put on helmets and protective jackets and reflective jackets and boots and whatever. I mean, they look like Michelin guys, you know, because we, we want to protect them. Because that's the most important thing for every human being is the children, you know. And therefore, it's easier in a way in Sweden to find basis for such an argument. But as you say, with changing generations, uh, maybe it's the time now. And with the health effects, but you also brought up a very important issue, namely the pedagogic effects. In all these studies clearly showing this is not the way to produce new Nobel laureates. So, I knew that in Australia or in some other places, they, they have already changed the, the legislation or the for some schools have, yes. have free, how they did, because maybe you are in contact with um, I the am a little bit, in, in different yes, ways. I cannot really answer for the legal aspects, but in most democracies, uh, schools and especially private schools are allowed to do a lot and you find the same in Sweden too and interestingly enough um, the schools in Sweden uh, where children are supposed to learn the best and mature the best they are the Regio Emilia, the Montessori and the Steiner Waldorf schools and they don't use all these gadgets or use them very little and still their pupils are somewhat better, you know, which is a sort of a, a stone in the shoe for many schools, you know. And uh, so there are ways. And of course, there has been dramatic changes, lawsuits like in France recently, in Belgium, there are some movements also. And also in France, not to be forgotten, the case with Marine Ricard, who got um, a handicap compensation from the court of law uh, the way she would have gotten in Sweden and suddenly in France which is a country not very well known for their handicap support you know and suddenly after or not suddenly it took three and a half years and I worked a lot and sent a lot of material to her but she succeeded so it's um, I, I don't know what you say in legal terms but she is the sort of first case you can base future yeah. cases on yeah yeah, Case president or what you say, yeah, yeah, so. Case what? Case law, yeah. Case law, yeah. And you know, since um, France and Spain are members of the European Union, her case can be used here, of course, or in Sweden. So it's interesting from that point of view too, you know, so. Um, I think it's uh, always important, you know, I get a lot of documents from the whole world where people are trying to influence their government or the local government or the municipality council, something. And to be honest, most of these very thick documents are very unclear. It's very hard to understand what the person or per and uh, civil servants, they work very much the same way. They need to have a short and clear thing to work with. And you don't need to send this uh, paper. Uh, you just need to send what you want. And you should tell them very clearly. And I see that in the world, when people stay up and say no, then suddenly, wow, um, yes, we have a sheet for that. Yes, that's the no sheet. Oh, yeah, good, good, good. And then the process is started. And I don't say that uh, war is won, but at least a small battle is won, and another one, and another one, and another one. And I feel sorry for uh, civil servants and for politicians that get gets these thick amounts of paper, and they sit there, you know, what, what do they actually want, you know? 
uh, oh, okay, they want to move this antenna. Okay, we move it and then we upgrade the output power. They didn't win anything, you know. They should have said, no, we don't want the exposure. You can hang laundry on the antenna, but we don't want the exposure. That's the message, you know. We don't you know? want exposure and we don't mind to not have the mobile phone with mm -hmm. working all day, no? Because people normally claim the antenna go out yeah. and still using the phone. Of course, That's yeah. the reason for the yeah. antenna. Yeah. Um, you have to be clear and credible. Using mobile phones, yeah. at least you can prevent kids. Yeah. To say, okay, you probably don't allow the first advice. Step would be kids. The first step would be kids. Yeah. I do it. Yeah. I agree, I agree with you. Yeah. 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 Like you know, one, one strategically, I could agree, but you but you sound like sort of moving backwards all the time. I ask you again, what do you want? You want the microwave-free society. And also, if I could interrupt you, you should have, um, and you are so smart with this, you know, you should have these um, uh, crucial questions. Um, uh, you should sort of pinpoint people. Uh, and again, like this English example, who is actually responsible for my child? And I don't accept the vague answer. I want to have a name. And that's suddenly the headmasters. Everyone in the society pressed down on the focal point. And suddenly the people being headmasters feel, do I want to harm a child? No, I don't want to. It's a moral ethical issue suddenly, you know. Um, you have to, uh, I'm always thinking about, for instance, a very, very, very costly and very, very unnecessary and very stupid project when the Americans, in an enormous economical crisis, decides to put the man on the moon. And they just said, we do it, regardless of the cost and so on. And you know, when Neil Armstrong steps down on the moon, people see him, they remember there was Buzz Aldrin and, and this other guy up in the capsule, but they don't know the names of the 600,000 people that were employed in this project. It's like a country being employed, you know. And they just did it in spite of they didn't have any money, they didn't have any use for it, they didn't develop anything really, and it was just a huge waste of money. And therefore, I agree with you, it's not the right time, and then it is the right time. Mm -hmm. Because these are occupied with other issues, and you can sneak up to a level where the consumers suddenly start saying, by the way, there was another thing too. We not only want food and water and clean air, we also want the wireless uh, to go away, you know. But I, I'm still thinking if you go back to 65, 70, yeah. the first step to stop cigarettes, take out cigarettes from society, probably, it, I don't know, but it were the child's, say, not allowed to sell cigarettes to under 18 that's guys, that no? came later no it well. it was actually a social divider uh, it uh, uh, early became noted that um, in in layman terms losers were using cigarettes and winners they didn't the they first changed. one to realize were the super powerful and super rich and um, there has been in Sweden for instance several fantastic interviews with super rich people and they have been interviewed and um, for instance I remember one interview they asked the person who is head of a huge brewery what was the best to be so very very rich and he said immediately I don't have to use a mobile phone and that's a social divider you know people what I have to uh, I'm, I'm working here I must have that but he doesn't. So that's what yeah, happened no, that's with smoking. Right. It's yeah. happening in a small, in, a, in another level, in the bars. Yeah. Before a few years ago, Wi-Fi yeah. was a, a good thing. And yeah. Now you you will find Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. Bars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It begins to be yeah. A, a Again, a social divider. The winners go to the Wi-Fi free. The losers, they are exposed. I, I hope it happened with some schools. Yeah. But at the moment, all the schools are going. 
pro technology, pro. But no, not, not in I Sweden. I repeat, Regio Emilia, Montessori, and Waldorf Steiner schools. They say, no, not so good. And often children going to these schools, they come from the sort of powerful, intelligent people uh, with money. So it's a social divider already happening and since 10, 15 years back, you know. So I feel, and I've written together with a Norwegian uh, telecom expert, uh, Einar Flydal, I have written a commentary, uh, which um, the headline is, the war is already over. You have already won, but you just don't realize it. So don't be shy uh, and just step up and say, now it's the time. Yeah, you know, when something that should be implemented. Yeah, and, and you know, when you buy a package of cigarettes, mm -hmm. it says smoking can kill you. Mm -hmm. Yes, the same. Yeah. You know, when you buy a mobile phone, maybe it should say, the microwaves used for telecommunication may give your child cancer. So, or and on the contrary, yeah, this device is safe. Does not, yes, yeah, exactly. Safe. And you know, coming back to this Nokia Consumer Electronics, in Sweden, um, the trade unions had, together with a lot of experts, uh, come up with this initial safety uh, standardization of computer screens. And then Nokia Consumer Electronics in Sweden, they looked at this. And you know, it should be really lowered, the exposures. And they said, no, this is not good enough. We are fathers and mothers too in Finland. We've gone to go another thousand times below. And so they did. And therefore today, uh, Nokia is one of the largest um, computer screen manufacturers in the world because they have such extremely low radiation standards. And do they inform about this to the consumer? Um, do they give this information to the consumer? Where you are indeed, they do on their websites and so on, you know, but in a sort of low key form uh, that um, the industry, and with industry, I don't only mean the manufacturers, also the operators, the insurance companies, and so on, if they join forces with good scientists as well, you know, but the scientists must be independent. Uh, completely, and otherwise people will not believe if they come up with that it's safe and they are paid by the industry, no one would believe them, you know, so they must be completely independent, but that could be arranged, that's nothing peculiar, you know, and that they also decide, and I have, um, oh, what's the English for that, I have um, uh, like a talk list uh, of the most important issues to investigate now and one of them we talked about yesterday is fertility and that with fresh money people say hey here we have an issue let's once and for all investigate that and uh, that has been done with regarding genotoxicity uh, it could be done with other areas as well because you know parents or adults in general they don't bother about if it should be two watts per kilogram or one watt they have to ask you is it safe or not could i give this to my child or not that's their question yeah that's it and therefore it would be good to cover you know i see it's like pieces of a cake you have immune system effects you have effects on biology on fertility and so on you know and to cover that and to use the best scientists that you have. I mean, Jesus Christ, we are talking about Nobel laureates now, you know, like Thomas Lindahl. And so that, that's the kind of people that should be used, you know. They are there for you, I mean, really. So, and we talk now about mobiles and, you know, cables. Uh, that's also interesting because uh, if you should rewire the society in a shielded format. Uh, I know just one of these small aircrafts I went with yesterday, they have in the order of 4,000 Swedish miles, 40,000 kilometers of cabling in them, micro cabling. If that should be transferred into shielded format, 
now we are talking about money and the world world's largest cable producer is actually ABB, a Swedish Swiss company and they would be very happy if someone says we need to go cable wired uh, but in a shielded format so there are money 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 everywhere and as you say you know the telecom industry may It's very simple. I could summarize it in a few sentences. In, pe in Sweden and all over the world, of course, uh, there are people claiming health effects from electromagnetic fields, mm -hmm. and they are called electro hypersensitive people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the scientific knowledge is not very firm. Very little money has been put into this. But um, it's really not the Swedish model, but in Sweden, uh, it was and again it's so smart it was a private person i had met her and talked with her for many years fantastic brilliant person and she decided and and i helped her to write a letter to the swedish government just asking the government uh, for a cup of coffee if you see what i mean she asked people with electro hypersensitivity are they included in the handicap regulations and laws? And if they are, are there any exceptions to these laws and regulations? And the Minister of uh, Health and Welfare, he answered, yes, they are included and no, there are no exceptions. All the laws and regulations apply to them. And then based upon that, the mm, umbrella you know for people with functional impairments or disabilities is the United Nations uh, and at that time it was called the standard rules from 1993 they go back actually to Nazi Germany atrocities developed to the standard rules and later on 2007 changed into convention for various um, economical reasons I would say uh, and uh, they are just protected uh, and it's a very interesting situation. Uh, so they should be made accessible to the whole of society. And um, uh, there is a general realization that when you make society accessible, like in Stockholm, for instance, we have these faced off sidewalks. So if you come in a wheelchair, you can easily go up and down on a street. And I have a place where I often wait for my wife there is such a sidewalk there, and I've never seen a person in a wheelchair, but I've seen thousands of bicycles, baby prams, shopping carts, and so on. And that's interesting because uh, the United Nations have realized that if you make society accessible for people like in wheelchairs, everyone gains from that. And if we use that thinking, if we make it accessible for electro hypersensitive people, maybe people will not get cancer. Not in a really professional way, I would say, but semi-professional. Mm -hmm. And if you don't listen to and help people e immediately when they talk about their electro-hypersensitivity, the cost will uh, go up ten times for society. Also smart. Mm -hmm. You know, if you listen to the person claiming a functional impairment, you will have a tenth of the cost not listening. And again, it's, you know, now we are not talking about science, we are talking about common sense. Because this person will not give up. They will come back and come back and come back, you know, costly. And, uh, you know, Sweden, again, coming back to this change of the United Nations from the standard rules to the convention was based upon that the UN looked around in the world and they got pretty angry because they saw that countries like Sweden and other very rich countries, we were talking about a lot of accessibility measures, mm -hmm. but we were not doing very much. And therefore they said, no, this is not good enough. We must change it to convention. Mm -hmm. And you know, with the convention, the UN can fine um, 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 economical fines. And we're talking about huge amounts of money. A country could um, have to pay like hundreds of millions of Swedish crowns, you know. So it's a huge fine you can add up on. And of course, they are right. I mean, Sweden can do a lot more. Countries like in 
Africa, some of them are so very poor, you cannot really sort of ask them to do a lot. But legally, they must, in the long run. Zimbabwe must be accessible to people in wheelchair too. Maybe not today, but in a few years' time, you know, they have to.